Okay, is occlusion culling also generated at runtime? Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Yep, sure. I'll make you full screen. Okay, good. And I'll make sure I can see my key. All right, so this is the basic level, and I can add. Uh, uh, um, if I, there we go. I can add an occlusion <laughs> occluder instance. There we go. 3D. So everybody was just watching you for a moment there. Great. So I can add an occluder instance 3D, and I can bake a brand new occluder. And so far, so good. But when I make it, I just press bake occluder. It'll take all the meshes and assign the information. But if I go into documentation, there's nothing in here to rebake this at runtime. So I can't bake occlusion at runtime. So what I've done instead is if I go to the uh, actual floors, so the way the room maker works is it picks a floor with all its props and then decides, do I need walls or doors? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to floor underscore, and let's, let's pick, I don't know, um, pillars two. Yep. So here is my occluder instance. I don't know how clear those purple lines are on YouTube. That's the occlusion. So what I've done is I've said um, every floor must have an occluder instance. When I go through this again, especially when we do this, of course, I'm going to use inheritance. So all floors are a child of plain floor. And they yeah. must have an occluder instance and whatever else we need. But in this case, I'm just doing it manually. Um, any changes I make, let's say I move these uh, braziers to here, um, you'll notice the occluder information is now in the wrong place. So I'm going to go here and bake the occluder. When I run the game. Without the artifacts, of course. Without the artifacts, but with compression. All of that information is now being held. So each corridor, each room, um, each every static body. There we go. So these things have now moved. Every static body now has occlusion. What's interesting is if I forget to give each floor its own type of occlusion and I walk to where a bookshelf was in a different room, everything just vanishes. And it's a, it, it's a great reason to, to write a little script to, to catch your own thing. I don't know how clear this is on, um, on YouTube or how well it's broadcasting. I know that... The, Pretty smooth at the moment. Um, so on my screen, this is 60 frames a second. Um, uh, I don't it, know. It's definitely smooth here. I don't think we're transmitting at 60 frames per second. I think we're locked right. at 30. Uh, but yes. you'll notice that none of the particles are showing through walls. Woo! Um, so yeah, there's that. Don't really want to do too much of this because without the, the high definition, it doesn't look as good. But I just like wandering around here. It feels really pretty. Um, I'm not yet at the position where I'm ready to export this and let people play with it. Uh, just because it crashes and there's little bugs now and again. Uh, nothing major, but just stuff I'd like to learn and, and optimize. But yeah, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. <sighs> Beep, boop. Awesome. And minimize that. Uh, so yeah, so currently, occlusion culling is not possible at runtime. Or rather, rebaking the occlusion map is not possible at runtime. I don't know how good the solution I have is. Like, I, I feel like... I'm being a little, um, what's the word? I'm, I'm redoing the same task again and again and again. Yeah. In a lot of cases, I, there's a place I want to go back and optimize, but at the moment it works really well. With that occlusion turned off, it is much slower. And there is actually a fun way you can test occlusion, which is to turn off collision on the camera. Oh, yes. And then when you go into a wall, you can actually see the occlusion happening.